In this video, I'm going to be covering pointers to objects. And up until this point, it may seem, seem like pointers are just a more complicated way of doing things we could already do. So why, why work with a pointer if it's easier to just work with a regular variable? And the reason for that is your program is divided in the memory into two different parts. And so far, we have only worked with one of those, and that is called the stack. And the stack, in layman's terms, you could say it manages itself. Uh, the downside is it's very small. And so if you're writing a program that needs to use images or audio or any other large files or assets, the stack is just not big enough to support them. With Visual Studio, by default, you have one megabyte of RAM uh, allocated for your stack. In other compilers and operating systems, you have, uh, it's determined by the operating system how big the stack is, but it's still going to be relatively small compared to the heap. The heap is the large C of memory, the, the gigabytes of memory that you will need if you're going to be using large assets in your program. And since the heap is not uh, managed by itself or the operating system, you have to manage it as a programmer. Any information that you store out there will need an address or will have an address and you will have to keep track of that address using a pointer. So that's where we go from here. This is the way you're probably going to be using pointers most often. You're going to be using pointers with objects. Okay, so I have a class up here my employee class. It's got a few variables in it. It fits just fine on the stack so normally we would say employee employee and that gives us an object from that class on the stack. But let's say it was a larger object or let's just say for whatever reason we wanted to put this object on the heap and we need a pointer to keep track of where it is. So to do that, you're going to specify the data type, employee, pointer, give it a name, employee, and then say equals new employee. So new is our C++ keyword and it serves two purposes. It's going to find a place on the heap where we can place our object. It's gonna call the constructor and our object will be created out there on the heap. And then new is going to return the address. And so we can store that in our pointer right here. Uh, don't forget your asterisk, especially if you're familiar with Java and C sharp, you wouldn't have the asterisk there. But in C++, if you don't have the asterisk, then you don't have a pointer, and you're going to get an error. It's not going to compile. So if I try to run that, yes, I'm going to get an error. Conversion from employee pointer to employee, and so it's going to need the asterisk there. All right, and that gives us an employee on the heap. Furthermore, when you're working with the heap, you need to remember to deallocate your memory or to free up that memory when you're done with the object and so to do that you use the delete keyword just like that so this will create our object and this will remove our object anytime you use new you need to use delete at some point later on in the program when you're done with the object make sure you delete it Failure to delete it will create a memory leak. You'll have memory out there on the heap that you don't have access to. If you ever run something like this in a loop, then you'll have a very large memory leak and eventually your program will crash. So we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, for right now, we'll just continue working with the object as a pointer. It's gonna be a little bit different than working with an object on the stack. So I've got a few functions up here. I have a get info function, a calc pay function, and a display function. If I wanted to run those, working with my object on the heap, working with a pointer, I'm going to use my variable name, employee, and then I'm going to use an arrow 
instead of a dot. And then I can call get info for calc pay or display. Normally we would use the dot, but if you have a pointer, you're going to have to use the arrow. So calc pay and then display. So let's try that. Working inside the class, you have a very special pointer that points to whatever object you're currently using. Uh, and that is called the this pointer. So I'll show you that. I'm going to add a constructor to this class. So employee. And there's my default constructor. I can also add, let's say, a a four argument or three argument constructor. We'll have the name, the rate, and the hours passed in. And then I need to set my class variables based on these variables that are being passed in. And so to do that, you only need to do that if you use the same name as your class variable. So my class variable is called name and then I'm passing in a variable that I also called name. This is conventional, this is the way it's normally done, uh, but to differentiate between these ones that are being passed in and the ones that belong to the class, we use the this keyword. This is a pointer to the current object, so whatever employee this is operating on, this points to that object. And I will say this name equals name this rate equals rate and so on and so this this is a pointer to whatever object I am using if I'm down here in main let's say I want to use that constructor up there I can use that constructor instead of get info We'll pass in Mary, $10 an hour, uh, 45 hours a week. Run the program. And I've done something wrong. What did I forget? Oh, my constructor is private. That's no good. There we go. Alright, that's good for one. Let's say we're working with an array of pointers or an array of object pointers. For the array, we would say employee pointer, give it a name. I'm just going to call it E. And then however many employees we want. And then this, this creates an array of pointers, but does not create any objects. So we have no objects at this point. To create the objects, we need a for loop. And inside the for loop, we will say E sub I equals new employee. Can't really use our constructor inside the for loop here because all the values would need to be different, but just to have our, our generic objects, we can do it like that. That works just fine. And we could also call get info in here if we wanted to. And that would be just like that. We, we use the variable name, the index. We still use the pointer arrow. And then we call whatever function we need. If we had public variables, you could access those using the arrow as well so let's just say let's say that all of these are public and if I just wanted to set the name or just wanted to access one of those variables without using a function I can do that with the arrow as well I could say name equals 
default or unknown or whatever. But that's how you would work with pointers or an array of pointers to objects. Uh, in the same way, all five of these would have to be cleaned up before the program's over. So once we're done with all of our employees and we're moving on, we would run another for loop. And inside this for loop, we're just going to call delete on each employee. So delete E sub I. And that will clean up the memory for us. The last thing I want to cover in this video is a few examples of what a memory leak is and what they look like and how you can prevent them. So if I have an object out on the heap, That's fine. But then if I were to say E equals new employee again, what happens to this employee? This creates an employee and returns an address. This line will create a new employee and return an address. But I have assigned both objects to the same handle. And this pointer can only hold one address. So it, it throws that one away and replaces it with this employee right here. Only this isn't really gone. It's still out there. It's still allocating space and it's still tied up. And that is a memory leak because we can no longer access that employee. There's no way to ever get that back, yet it still occupies space. And eventually it will crash your program or cause heap corruption. Uh, so. Be aware of that you don't want to assign a pointer a new object without first deleting the one that is currently there and we can look at this in a in a loop now just just one object is not going to be a huge deal in this program uh, but I'll show you how it can be a big problem so let's just say this happened multiple times a lot of programs run in a loop And so let's just say that without realizing it, we were assigning a new object to a pointer over and over again, and we never delete the old object that occupies that space. I'm gonna bring up the resource monitor. Now I have 1400 megabytes free, roughly give or take a few. And if I run this program, I expect to see that memory that's being used steadily go up. So my program's running now and you can see I've quickly eaten all of the memory available and then all of the memory on standby is disappearing as well and this curve up here is showing how my program is just eating all the memory it can. And, and that's how you know you have a memory leak. If your memory usage is steadily going up and never flattens out, uh, you've got a problem. So let's stop this. We'll see our memory recover, hopefully. There we go, now we've got all of our free memory again. So there's one example of a memory leak and how you can detect them. If you don't know you have a memory leak, look at your resource monitor, look at how your memory is going up. If it steadily goes up without ever plateauing out, uh, that's how you know you've got a leak. I could fix this just by deleting it before I create the new one. I can say delete E and that will take care of it. Now if I run the program, the memory will be just fine. You can see I don't have that big curve ramping up. My free memory is solid, uh, so no problems if you delete.